right everybody, we're in uh, basically the tip of the Ards Peninsula. We have came down today to catch up with the now, I'll call it infamous 450 that's been driven around Ireland uh, by farmhand and driven by Ben here, Ben Buckley is, is with us now. You're not in the seat today because you're talking to us. Has yes. that been emotional? Yeah, it's been tough now. I, uh, <laughs> I like to mind it as best I can, but um, yeah, I'm sure Cormac can't do too much damage. <laughs> Ah oh, no, I've seen Cormac in action. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Ben, what exactly is this about in your own words? Like, what what has Farmhand been try or trying to achieve with this 450? So the idea of sending out the 450 was to target fellas running triple mowers, just to show them how much benefits there is to having a, a big M and how much more convenient it makes the job of mowing and. Basically just to spread awareness really more than nothing else. Because I was going to, I have to jump in there and say like, and I don't mean to be totally obvious, but we're in Ireland here, we're in what I would call the land of the Big M. Mm, that's a fact, yeah. So like, but you haven't been targeting Big M users? No, the idea was, because like you can get set in your ways too, so the idea was to just stir it up a bit and show the fellas that are running triple mowers what the Big M is all about basically. And how has that went for you? Eh? Ah, it's gone very well, very well. Uh, there's like, everyone has had a very positive reaction to it and like the first thing you get each time is a bit of a wow factor and fellas are kind of interested straight away and early, you know. Now you yourself have only joined Farmhand this year, is that correct? That's right, yeah. So I did four years down in Tralee IT um, doing agricultural engineering. So from that then I met Farmhand at the FTMTA in Punchestown. And uh, originally I was supposed to be going driving the 720 Fent that they run. Uh, on different implements, just doing different demonstrations, and uh, kind of turned out that they wanted me to go drive the 450s. To be fair, you haven't had much experience on a big M before. No, before four months ago, I never drove a big M before. And how do you feel now? I'm confident anyway, yeah. It's definitely the solution. And you've been from every corner of Ireland, Cork City basically, right up to Port Roche to Donegal. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been along every coast. I could see the, the sea from every province, so I've definitely Definitely spread the wings around the place anyway. But like getting back to the Big M itself, so the world market for Big M's is something like a hundred odd production machines every yeah, year. that's right. How many Big M's are operating in Ireland this year? So including the one behind me, there was 20 brand new 450s brought into the country this year. That's 20% of yeah. the market share in Ireland. That's correct, yeah. I guess that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So the, the kind of season we get and the tight windows we get like, fellas are really starting to see, and as a lot of people are starting to say to me, labour is definitely becoming an issue. So if you can send one man, one machine, and leave him alone for the day and let him knock 200 acres at his ease, it's kind of the thing to do, like, you know? Well, obviously most people are focusing on the changes of the, the big M450 compared to the likes of the 420, but I'm not going to ask that question just next. The question I'm going to ask is, your brief was get the 450 out there, get it to guys running triple mowers, like they do on this uh, farm here, this contracting business that you're yeah. with. So describe what's happening when a guy that's only run a tractor with three mowers or maybe even two mowers looking to go bigger, what's happening when he gets up into the seat of that big M? So there's probably silence for 20 seconds and he looks around and he kind of decides, is this going to be doable? And uh, ah, you just get him up and running. I'd always knock out the headlands first, give a fella a bit of space to breathe and, and get used to the machine. and. Um, Definitely like visibility is the first thing that's noticed like. So obviously with a set of triple mowers on a tractor like you have the problem of visibility of your front mower and there's columns in your way over each shoulder like. So visibility is the first thing that's picked up on. And uh, after that then obviously power is, power is a big one. Kind of what tends to happen straight away is fellas really see how quick things can be done and how effortless it is. And, like you hold onto that joystick and you're not reaching for a control box to switch or divert oil to, to different mowers at the back and it's it's just the simplicity I suppose really. Once they get a little bit of a run on the big M, because the big M controls can be relatively daunting, even in the, the big X cab, that's you know right, when you yeah. get a guy that's used with this other type harvester, say like Class or John Deere or some of these other types that you know you push the stick forward, so a mm. guy's used to his tractor, he's driven his whole life. All of a sudden, you're putting them into a return to center yeah. type. How, you know, because there's a lot for a guy to take in. Oh, there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the second brake pedal in front of the passenger seat would be the solution, but um, 
fellas that have driven a, a fent or they've driven a harvester or something hydrostatic like that or they've driven a loader where they're operating a joystick all day, they tend to pick it up very quickly like you know. But um, what can be done in the big game is you have a choice of four different um, sensitivity ranges. So you can turn down the sensitivity so things will happen a bit slower from and uh, just gradually ease them into it like. But you'll see there like <coughs> on average about I'd say 10, 12 acres a fella, you'd, you'd happily get out of the cab and let him mow himself like. The actual 450 itself, what are the main changes between it and the 420? So, <coughs> driver comfort has definitely improved big time. The machine is practically new from the ground up. What you have is your, your cab is upgraded to the same cab as the Big X, and you have uh, the same control arm and joystick, so it's a lot easier to operate. Then, going into the mechanics of it, uh, the 420 was spring suspended. So for the flotation of the mowers on the ground, it was done through springs. So it was get out and adjust them if that's what you wanted to do. Whereas now it's all done off uh, a ram, so it's all hydraulically done. And uh, the second big change then, which fellas will be delighted to hear, is they've removed the gearbox from the centre of the beds on either side. So you don't have power going down through the bed and splitting either side like you used to have. And you were belt driven and now you're shaft driven. So you have more direct power and less losses through your engine. So what's in her now is a Lieber engine. She's a straight six, 12 litre. So power is definitely not an issue anyway. And is that producing the 450 that it says on the side of the tin? Yeah, exactly. What you used to have was when you raised up the old 420, what you did was you sacrificed your suspension. Whereas now you simply have two double acting rams welded back to back. For the bottom half is your suspension and the top half is your field height. So when you're grouping 32 feet at a time, you're up over it and you're not damaging your swart each time you come out of the run. Like. So before in a 420, you might have had to do a bit of tidying up afterwards, whereas now that's not necessary. You were out with good friends uh, of ours not that long ago, uh, the Killen Brothers. That's correct, yeah. And they run the, the set of B1100s uh, that we actually had uh, for a little while off farm hand. We, ha we run them in the, 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 the famous 315. How did she do? Because they both have a 420. That's correct, And they yeah. both have the 1100s. When you were there, how did it do? What was the comparison like? So the man that drives it, they call Colonel. And um, he wasn't long in the seat before he had his mind made up anyway. We were working tough conditions, like um, there'd been two weeks of rain and we got into a field, that it was a bit of a pinch in it and uh, conditions just weren't 100% like. And uh, the 420 failed to get up the hill and uh, they kind of turned to me and said the 450 won't go up there either. And uh, the Colonel faced her up the hill anyway and she climbed the way up, so that was enough of a reaction for one day. But as far as the moor beds and that are concerned, Ben, they're, they're pretty much the same system that Crone are running across. Yeah, it's the, the same safe cut system, but you've gone away with your gearbox in the centre of the bed. So one mower was practically producing two swarts. So it's gone back to one clean bed now that you can see across the whole lot. It's just very simple to maintain and it's all quick attach flails and all that crack, so. I see you have this one equipped with a GPS system. What type of system? That's correct. Um, there's a Topcon system in it. For my final year in college in Tralee, I actually did a project with the Topcon system, so it was very convenient then when I hopped into the big M. I just knew my way around it, and it's, uh, it's quick to set up, and it's, uh, it's kind of the simplicity of it that makes it, you know? Like, it's not a case where you go into four acres and you don't want to use it. So we're, we're basically here, we're in the last week of August as, as we speak now. The whole concept behind this was you were going to mow your way to the ploughing. That's correct. Um, we're getting very close to the ploughing. So what's next for this 450? Are you almost finished with it? So <laughs> you're never really finished with it. There's always names being added to the list. So we've 60 demonstrations done so far and she's two and a half thousand acres on the clock and nearly 400 hours. So she's definitely seen a lot of the, the country as we went. So she's going to start mowing her way down towards Dublin now, back to farmhand. And uh, she'll go for the power washer and onto the lorry then, and hopefully she'll go up on the stand just like that. And will you be at the plan talking about your adventures? I will, I will, yeah. There'll be plenty <laughs> of stories anyway. So. Well, look, Ben, thank you very much. And uh, personally, I think it's been great with Farmhand, and you have done it something a wee bit different for Farmhand yeah, as well. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's getting out and it's getting seen and there's certainly been a lot of media attention but obviously at Grassmen we have a great relationship with Crohn yeah, and with Farmhand yeah. and we wanted to cover it before it was finished so we're going to go and get some nice shots of it working now and we're going very to let good. you get back into the driver's seat because we don't want to spoil Cormac. <laughs> thanks very much. No bother, thanks.